I'm here this afternoon with Trevor Loudon from New Zealand. Uh, Trevor, uh, you had an, an incredible documentary called Enemies Within that came out uh, about a year and a half ago. Understand you're working on a new one. Still the concept, it sounds like, of Enemies Within, but this time within the church? Exactly. All right, let's tell me about this. Well, the first movie was about the infiltration of Marxists, Communists, Socialists and Muslim Brotherhood front groups into the US Senate and the US Congress. And uh, that's pretty extensive. This one is going to follow the similar pattern. What we say is that for a long time ago, the people who wanted to take America down understood that the Christian churches were the, were the strength of America the bulwark, the, the guardian of freedom. And if you want to take down America down from the inside, you have to infiltrate the churches. And they started doing that in the mainstream churches a uh, hundred years ago. But, they were, but now they're moving even to the, into the evangelical churches, into the, Christ, the gospel coalition and other organizations. They're using the faith-based initiatives to spread Marxism, through the, main, through the churches. So this movie is going to be an eye-opener for most American Christians to show how, how deep the penetration and deliberate subversion of their organizations has become. In what ways uh, are we seeing this infiltration? I'm, I'm gathering, or I'm, my assumption is that it would be people that are coming into the church to join, but they have ulterior motives. Yeah, well, they set up organizations like, for instance, the Gospel Coalition. It's pretty highly regarded in most evangelical churches. But several of the leaders of that group are Marxists. These have been people who have been involved in Marxist causes uh, probably before they became Christians. And you have to really ask yourself how serious their conversion was, whether they're still Marxists, whether they've always been Marxists, and, and their agenda that they're promoting now is certainly Marxist. So are they Christians with a Marxist tint? Are they Marxist masquerading as Christians? I think there's a bit of both there. So um, yeah, and, and we're looking at the seminaries because, you know, most, um, and the theological colleges, because the pastors are educated in these organizations and many of the heads of these groups are Marxists or socialists and so these young pastors are coming out with uh, talking about social justice and talking about global warming and anti-racism and all the things that really have uh, are Marxist talking points they really have nothing to do with traditional Christianity and uh, this is pervasive right now and uh, right into the evangelical churches right across the Midwest and, and, and the so-called heartland of Right, right across the Bible Belt. So um, if this trend continues, I think in 10 years time, American Christianity will be unrecognizable as, as from what most um, people who grew up in the faith would, would understand as real Christianity. That, <coughs> excuse me, that's a very strong statement. Um, so basically you're saying that the theology of the church is changing because of the impact of the concepts from Marxism and communism and other yeah, absolutely well if you look back you know the, the uh, look back in history a little bit you, you had a you had a thing in the church situational ethics you know that ethics can be changed uh, ethics can be adjusted to the circumstances now that was a revolutionary com, uh, concept when it was first introduced 30, 40 years ago. But now it's widespread amongst pastors. Now that was introduced by a man called Joseph Fletcher, who was, I think, believe, the head of a Harvard Theological College, the Harvard Theological School. And he really changed Christianity a lot in the 50s, 60s, 70s, and the impact is still there today. Well, Joseph Fletcher was a Marxist. He was a Communist Party member. He would go to the Soviet Union. He was involved in the, the World Peace Council, a major Soviet front. And in his later days, 
he became an atheist and an advocate for late-term abortions. Mm. So, and this was the man who has a huge influence on the Christian churches in this country right through the 20th century and down to today. He was always a Communist Party advocate, a Communist Party member. But most American Christians have no idea of that side of him. All they know about is that he was a pioneer of, of, of situational ethics, which has really changed churches in this country. Most people when you here in the States, when you think of a church, do not think of political influence in the church. And so that really sounds like a new concept to introduce to the, the public. But it sounds like this is something that's been going on for quite a while. Look, this has been going on since the 1920s. But it was largely, um, there was a heavy penetration of the Catholic Church, heavy penetration of the Episcopalians and the, um, you know, the, the, the you know, Presbyterians and the Methodists and those organizations. But the evangelical churches were relatively clean up until probably the last 15 to 20 years. And as, it lo as the pews were deserted in the Methodist Church and the Presbyterian Church, a lot of people moved into the evangelical churches. As they went more Marxist, more left-wing, more crazy, way up, lunatic left, people went into the evangelical churches. So the Marxists have followed them. They want to hunt every Christian down and, and basically change their way of thinking. So you see evangelical churches now buying into things like global warming, welcoming um, illegal immigrants into this country. There's a big push in the churches for that. You see them talking about social justice and anti-racism. These are all Marxist talking points, but they're accepted as almost mainstream now by many even evangelical churches, certainly by the uh, large chunks of the Methodists and the, and the Episcopalian churches, they are completely Marxified. But now that kind of thinking is seeping into the evangelical churches and the, the smaller independent churches. And, and groups like the Gospel Coalition, which was set up about eight years ago, with famous names like Tim Keller and Albert Moeller and um, Russell Moore, they have they are, uh, their, their ideas are very widely accepted in evangelical churches. But Tim Keller, you know, openly acknowledges that he was fell in love with the Frankfurt School of Marxism as a young university student. And he is prom still promoting his socialist doctrines today from the Gospel Coalition. You know, several founders of the Gospel Coalition have Marxist backgrounds. And then you have the um, faith-based initiatives that were started up under, under um, George Bush, George Bush II, which was the, the, the so-called thing of, well, we're going to start funding the churches. We're going to start getting the government involved with spreading the gospel message. Well, this is a complete scam. And this, is, this was really amped up under Obama. And this is a way of introducing Marxism into the churches all across the country. The idea of um, the idea is uh, basically um, you you get government money, you 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 put it into the churches, and you start programs, health programs, welfare programs, etc. Well, all the health programs are nothing to do with the gospel. They're all about promoting Obamacare, for instance. And, and these are Marxist-run programs. The money is there. They dish out the money to the churches. The churches get seduced by the money, and they get seduced by the socialist doctrines that come with it. Like in Texas, they've got a thing called Episcopalian, Episcopalian Health Foundation. And they've been going around to the churches in, in, in north-central Texas, giving them money, um, getting them involved in social programs, and it's all about social justice. It's all about, um, it's all about socialist programs, government programs, etc. But these churches are getting sucked into it. And these people are, are partnering with things like Planned Parenthood. 
you know. Um, so there's nothing to do with the Gospels in these things. There's nothing to do with salvation or sin or redemption or the Gospel message. It's all to do with social justice, community organizing, um, getting more money out of the government. But the churches are being seduced by the money and they're turning a blind eye to the communist Marxist ideology that goes with it. And they're being seduced into this. And this is widespread right throughout the country now. So the impact of that, I'm trying to think through what you're saying. So what, with that going on, that is pulling the church members, the congregants, away from the Bible's theology and teaching and bringing a more current cultural twist to how the church will operate, what it will do, and its opinion on it's twisting what the gospel says it's yeah. somewhat like uh makes me think about that snake in the garden of eden how uh, it just twisted things just a bit and got a totally different meaning out yeah. of what god said uh, absolutely it's it's totally reversing the message i saw a video recently the other day about a a, a conference for young evangelicals i think it was in ohio and they had people from all over the country young evangelicals there and the main speaker was a woman from Black Lives Matter in Missouri. Now, Black Lives Matter and, and the Organization for Black Struggle, which she came from, is a front for the Freedom Road Socialist Organization, a Maoist communist group. And she got up and told all these young evangelicals that the thing God most wanted them to, 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 to get involved in is countering white privilege. So this was the big gospel message here, that God wants you to counter white privilege. Well, I don't see that in the Bible. The Bible is colorblind. But they are bringing this Marxist, racist agenda and, and putting it in front of thousands of young evangelical kids who have no guidance in this, who have no understanding that they're being talked to by Marxists, who have a completely foreign agenda to the churches, who hate Christianity, but want to harness the energy of young Christians to serve the Marxist cause. And their pastors are sending them to this, to be exposed to this propaganda, with no discernment, no count, nothing. So these young Christians are going to come out there thinking, wow, God really does want me to get involved in countering white privilege. Nothing to do with spreading the gospel or the message of Jesus Christ. It's all about spreading Marxism through the churches. And, and the, the young idealistic kids, they want to do the right thing. They want to, they want to think that they're, they're working to, to spread the gospel. But what they're spreading is not the gospel. This is the doctrine of Karl Marx that they're spreading. And these kids think they're doing the right thing. Mm. So what do we do? How do we... Um... To me, it seems like we've got to educate people on a myriad of fronts with that to not only understand that it's coming into the church, but what the impact is to the church, to the doctrine of Jesus Christ, God's gospel, and, um, and how it's impacting our society today. Um, that's a tall order. How do we... Well, it, well, we it is a tall order. and this, this rot has gone pretty deep. You know, the, I think the church is have been under attack for a very long time. You know, people have tried to twist doctrine of, um, you know, there's thousands of young, there's thousands of young pastors out there now who are basically Marxists. Some of them are members of groups like the Communist Party USA, Democratic Socialists of America. These people are serving as pastors of churches right now. So this is deep. But we've also got to look at the things like, um, you know, when Lyndon Baines Johnson Back in 1954, he uh, basically, uh, for the churches to keep their tax-exempt status, they were forbidden from endorsing candidates or getting involved in politics. A few years later, they took prayer out of schools. A few years later, they pushed Roe v. Wade through, legalizing abortion in this country. Those are not unrelated events. No. You know, the churches were emasculated 
in their political um, work and then they push, they remove prayer from schools, they push through Roe v Wade and it's pretty much gone downhill since. So our movie is designed as a wake up call to pastors and lay Christians to understand the infiltration of the churches and the reason it's being done and the impacts. Now we don't expect this to completely counter everything that's gone on but we expect it to serve as a reference point for those millions of Christians out there who understand things are going wrong in the churches, altered, and hopefully that will unite a movement of, of traditional Christians who actually take back their churches, start to take back their churches, get their pastors back on track, and if they can't do that, to start their own independent churches. As uh, right now, with the growth of the home, home church movement is huge, mm -hmm. but we want to see that increase. Yeah. Because the mainstream churches and many of the evangelical churches, some of the big mega churches out there, are just now rotten with, with, with Marxist doctrine. Uh, one of the things we're seeing in our community is a real push with the interfaith yes. movement. Uh, can you kind of, um, sounds like that is part of what you're also describing, can you kind of... Sure yeah. on that. Well, one of the founders of the interfaith movement in this country back in the 50s was a man called Saul Alinsky. You may have heard of him. He was a Marxist community organizer from Chicago, very much in with the Communist Party, very much in with the Chicago mob. He worked with Frank Nitti of the Mafia. He learned the Mafia tactics and he learned the Marxist tactics. He founded a thing called the Industrial Areas Foundation, which worked very closely with the Catholic Church to bring Marxism into the churches. Now, he was very active in promoting, he was a total atheist, but he promoted the interfaith movement in Chicago, of mainly with Jewish and Christian churches, Catholic churches, Protestant churches at the time. It was all about bringing Marxism into the churches. Now we have seen the interfaith movement stretch to include Muslim groups as well. Now the Muslim Brotherhood, which is a pro-terrorist organization, uh, works through groups like CARE and ISNA and ICNA and the Muslim American um, Society and others to basically try and get Muslim doctrine into the, into the Christian churches, but more so to neutralize Christian opposition to the spread of Islam. You know, we'll be friends with these people. Well, if you make friends with the Christian churches, they're not going to stand and oppose you. Because Christians need to understand that Islam is a foreign doctrine. It is, it is, it is working to basically take over this country and every other Western country. Because where, where the difference between Christianity and Islam lies is Islam believes in conversion by the sword. It is perfectly legitimate to force others or, or defraud others or trick others into adopting, making their faith the monopoly faith around the world. They are an invasive force. So the interfaith movement is being used by both the Marxists and Islam working in conjunction to neutralize opposition by the Christian churches. The Christian churches should be standing firm and saying this is a Christian country and we will not accept the Islam Islamization of this country or the Marxization of this country or both of those enemies working in tandem. So the interfaith movement is a very subversive movement designed to neutralize Christian opposition to both Marxism and Islamization. No, I think in our country, most of the generations that have come up after me, or starting even with my generation, um, were not taught as much in school about the Marxism and communism and things like that. And so the, there's this whole multiple generations now that have that lack of understanding of what that truly means and the impact. We saw that with the past presidential election and the great following Bernie Sanders created. Yeah. Hundreds of thousands of young kids 
supporting Bernie Sanders and his democratic socialism. Well, Bernie Sanders, the difference between democratic socialism and full-on communism is about five to ten years. You know, Bernie Sanders is a hardcore, pro-Soviet, pro-terrorist Marxist. It stands against everything this country stands for, yet he attracted hundreds of thousands of young kids with this false idea that they would live in this great society where we had all the freedoms and liberties we have now, plus a whole bunch of free stuff. Well, it was it's a, a lie. It's a complete lie. And this same doctrine has gone into the churches. See, most Americans in the 50s and 60s and 40s, they understood that Soviet communism was a big threat. They could see the military parades in the Soviet Union, the atom bomb tests. They invaded numerous countries. They controlled and tyrannized all of Eastern Europe, large chunks of Africa and Asia. You could see communism very concretely moving across the globe. But even in those days, most Americans were not aware that there were huge inroads into our society through the foundations, through the churches, through the educational establishments, through the universities to introduce Marxism piece by piece inside America. You know, it was much more subtle. It was done by people with American voices and wearing business suits and wearing dog collars and etc. So even though Marxism fell in the Soviet Union, the cultural Marxism got even stronger in the United States. Here we see it expressed as political correctness, for instance, where certain ideas are off limits. You can only talk about certain things uh, in the college campuses. Well, that is, that is the, the tip of the iceberg of cultural Marxism. Cultural Marxism has actually expanded since the fall of the Soviet Union because it's had even less opposition. Nobody cares about communism anymore, so nobody's fighting it. So, you know, they're like rats in a garbage pile. If you don't poison them every year, they keep coming back. And, uh, and if you don't remove the garbage pile, they'll always be there. So, but they have taken over now. They are very heavily infiltrated in many government departments very heavily infiltrated the churches, infiltrated most universities. Most universities now are dominated by cultural Marxism. Most mainstream churches are dominated by cultural Marxism. And that is seeping into the evangelical churches and the smaller churches all over this country. And they are the only pure forms of Christianity we have left. And even they are under attack now. Wow. Any last thoughts? Well, we hope people will... We're going to put the movie out September this year as the, as the, the target date. And we're going to need funding. We're going to need people to uh, support the project. We're going to need support with interviews and, and information. So I, I just ask people to go to our website, enemieswithinthechurch.com enemieswithinthechurch.com and keep up with what we're doing, maybe send a few dollars our way, but also tell your friends about the project, tell your pastor about the project. Um, keep us abreast, any information you come across, anybody you think we should advertise, send it, uh, interview, send us an email, because we have a lot of research on this, we've, got, we've done very deep research, but there's still things we're uncovering all the time. And we want people to be able to tell their stories, what's happening in your local church, what's, uh, what infiltration you've un uncovered. You know, so, so yeah, just go to enemies, enemieswithinthechurch.com and uh, try and follow our project. And when the movie comes out, hold a showing in your church. You know, gather some friends around, hold a showing with your friends. And if your pastor doesn't want to see it, uh -oh. If the pastor's not interested, that should be a red flag right from the start. Amen. Your Amen. pastor might not be leading you in the correct direction. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's, that's what I would say to people. Well, Trevor, I appreciate very much your time this afternoon. We look forward very much to this documentary coming out. Appreciate your time uh, and work and research in a multitude of things 
that you've done here in the United States. We as Americans appreciate uh, this New Zealander uh, having taken such great interest in our country and I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Well, you're most welcome. Um, everybody who cares about freedom, everybody who cares about liberty owes a great debt to America, a great debt to this country and anything I can do to help repay that a little bit, um, all on board with. Ah, bless you. Thank you much.